Overall view of the Benin Kingdom. The year is 1501. The great kingdom then was ruled by Oba Ozuluwa, a powerful and wise man. Benin Kingdom then was rich in art and culture. Bronze plates, gold carvings, and the terracotta were the prime highlights of the day. The city was far developed ahead of its time that this was said about the city of Benin then. Quote, Many towns and an infinity of villages, the capital city itself being enclosed on one side by a wall 10 feet high. The king's palace is on the right side of town, being a collection of buildings which occupy as much space as the town of Harlem, with numerous apartments and fine galleries, most of which are as big as those on the exchange in Amsterdam. The whole town is composed of 30 main streets, very straight and 120 feet wide, apart from an infinity of small intersecting streets. These people are in no way inferior to the Dutch as regards to cleanliness." End quote. Dutch geographer Olfert Dapper on Benin in Descriptions of Africa, 1668. The Benin Kingdom was a center of ritual activity focused on the well-being and prosperity of the Edo people. Each year, the Opa, or King, of Benin performs in rituals in which he honors his royal ancestors to enhance the good fortune of his people. One important ceremony, Igu, centers on the Oba's mystical powers, which are then demonstrated in a subsequent ritual, Imubo, whose main purpose is for the Oba to drive away e any evil forces. The Oba sits in a red pavilion, red being a threatening color to help force away evil. Later, he dances with an ivory gong, striking it to repel malevolent forces. Idia was born in the area of Isi in Benin Kingdom. Her parents never wanted her to marry the Oba, a very beautiful woman whose beauty was marred by an herbalist by two large incisions on her head. The incisions were meant to disfigure her, but this became the main source of attraction and respect from Oba Ozuluwa. Oba Ozuluwa died after a peaceful reign. He left the kingdom in the hands of his wife and his two sons, one a warrior giant and the other, the Portuguese baptized Osawe, also known as Isigi. The quest for a new Oba of Benin had begun. The wisest and most powerful one will rule the kingdom. Culture states, if an Oba dies, his wife must be eliminated as they were considered a threat to the future Oba or throne. This was the dilemma Idea found herself in after the death of Oba Ozuluwa. The grave had been dug, and she was about to be condemned to death. At the same time, there was a heavy rife between Isigi and his brother on who was to become the next Oba. But with the help of Idia, who mobilized an army around Isigi, he went on to defeat his brother. Oba Isigi became the 16th king of Benin. His brother then later went to rule Udo, which was about 20 miles away from Benin. After Isigi became Oba, the cultural death warrant was still valid on his mother. He asked Omoregi Ero, the 17th Ero of Benin, to help hide his mother in the Shrine of Gods of Herbs, which no one except those initiated could enter. For a long time, he kept Idia, the mother of Isigi there, while Oba Isigi also fought to eradicate the bad custom of eliminating the Oba's mother. In 40 BC, a man named Era was chosen amongst four elders. It was these people that came to be known as kingmakers in later days. The Arrow family is one of the largest corporate families in Benin Kingdom. The family has been known as the defender of the kingship. After the barbaric tradition of killing the king's mother was successfully abolished by Isigi, his mother was restored back to the palace and there she was crowned the queen mother. She became the first Ioba. The king's mother was saved by the cost of the king promising never to have direct contact with his mother again for life. That's why the queen mother in Benin cultures can't come into direct contact with her son once he becomes king. After Oba Isigi became the Oba of Benin, the city witnessed rapid growth and stronger relationship between the Portuguese. 
During this period, the Benin Kingdom was witnessing several inversions from his neighboring Igala peoples. Most of the battles, she, Idia, went and fought like a man. There were situations she would dress like a man in battles. The battles she didn't fight, her military council brought victory to the throne. The Queen Mother's work is not only in the palace. She helped people around the town. Some said she even possessed magical healing which made the king a formidable entity. At the same time, she went about healing little children and blessing homes. Even when assassination attempts were made against the throne, Queen Mother Idia, through her powers, protected her son and kept the unity of the city. As time went on, Benin Kingdom witnessed a lot of developments under the reign of Queen Idia. Trade, arts, and commerce were the pride of the day. Under her reign, the kingdom witnessed advent of the missionaries into the region. It was said she ruled and established a royal court that will go on par with that of Queen Elizabeth I and that of Queen Candace of Ethiopia, who reigned at the time of Christ. Such grace and style with one woman. Apart from her military strength and her ability to make the land prosper through different sources of commercial activities, she was also seen as a spiritual figure during festivals held in the kingdom. Idia's social and cultural accomplishments, such as her invention of the Akasa dance for royal funerals and the creation of the parrot's beak or Ioba's cap, have been recorded in numerous writings. A great woman of power, she was known to have possessed great physical and spiritual strength. Hence, she was the only one that could wield the double-edged sword that could both recreate or wreak havoc. According to the royal bards, on her head was a distinctive coral war crown peculiar to her alone. Resting on her forehead was a charm with four cowries that ensured any oncoming stone or missile will not blind her. On the back of her head was the charm known as a boomerang. On her neck was a precaution rope with four leopard teeth tied to it. The rope reminded her to be careful and to avoid danger. On her chest was a day belt, designed to ensure that whatever the nature of the problem, dawn will always come. Hidden under it was the belt of dumbbells used to hypnotize and frighten her enemies. The Ada soldiers on this day were on their way to invade Benin. Ioba Idia and her son Isigi march into battle. As there were approaching the battlefield, the abyss, conceived as a bird of prophecy, flew over the soldiers marching to battle, shrieking and flapping its wings. The royal diviners predicted military disaster and urged retreat, but resolute Idia drew upon her strength and reputation. The rattled royal diviners predicted military disaster and urged retreat, but resolute Idia drew upon her strength and reputation in supernatural powers and neutralized the prediction of defeat. Closely heeding to the counsel of his mother who was on the battlefield with her own army, Isigi ordered the bird to be shot. Fortified by her powerful presence and at her urging, Isigi rallied his dispirited soldiers to a victorious battle. After a long reign of great accomplishment and battles won, the great Ioba Idia passed on to the great beyond. Isigi was devastated by his mother's death. In her memory, he ordered the ivory tusks and masks he commissioned to immortalize her. Bereft of his mother's strength, Oba Isigi turned to his favorite wife, Alaba, whom Idia must have groomed for his comfort and to be his confidant. The death of Idia paved the way for Elaba to become the next dominant female in the region. She accompanied Isigi to many battles, and whatever crisis he faced, she faced with him. Wow, this is a breathtaking story. For a mother to go through such events, ups and downs for her son, no wonder they say a mother's love is the ultimate. Well, this is just one of the many stories that talk about the cultural and historical side of a great nation called Nigeria. How much do you know your roots as Nigerians and Africans? For more information, visit us on www.ashirimagazine.com. Follow us on Twitter at Ashiri Magazine, 
on Instagram, and on Facebook. Till we come your way next month, bringing up the richest story straight out of Nigeria, stay true to your culture. I am Basi Yikbi, Shiri, saying, know your roots. Thank you.